Welcome to the Extra Dimension. This episode is on the topic of Project Phi, featuring Ian Buck and Ryan Rampersad. Find the show notes for this episode of the Extra Dimension at thenexus.tv slash TED4. Alright, so Google Phi is not a Wi-Fi thing. Not exactly. It's a mobile network thing where Google is offering so you you are Google's customer you pay them and then they get you access to Sprint and T-Mobile's mobile networks mm-hmm. uh, and it will just pick whichever tower is has the better signal in, in a given area or it will choose Wi-Fi um, if that's better right and and, the, and that's both like home networks that, that you have you know because it's your home network mm-hmm but it also gives you access, I believe, to a bunch of, like, wireless networks that are all over the place that are partnered with them kind of thing. I have no idea what, you know, what kind of coverage those Wi-Fi networks have, uh, you know, because I don't know who their partners are and stuff. Um, and I've never been part of something like that, you know, because I know Comcast has a similar thing where they try to get you access to a bunch of wireless networks around the, around the country. But, uh, yeah. I mean, the the real draw here is having access to two different mobile networks that you can, you know, that you don't even need to worry about which one you're on. Is that the real draw? Yes. Well, I'll, that and the price. Oh, is that the draw? Um, well, not for us, <laughs> because we're pro users and we know that, I mean, we, we're pretty assured that we have the best price on the market. Right. Like, but... For, for what we do, the $30 plan on T-Mobile is... This is amazing. Mm-hmm. But even even me knowing that there was a thirty dollar tier on T Mobile, I literally had to ask you for a link for it because you cannot find it from oh, T Mobile. And it's even website. more difficult now, you know. Yeah, of they, course. They've they've hidden it further, and you can only do it. You can only get it in store at Walmart's. If you go, to, oh, that's funny. If you go to a T Mobile store, they say, "Nope, can't help you." Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's not convenient. <laughs> it's like, here, let me give you thirty two dollars a month. Like, just <laughs> please let me. It's like they don't want people to to you know go and give them the least money possible to get the most bang for their buck. Right. Oh well. So with that plan, what you get is 100 minutes of talking, mm-hmm. unlimited texting, and mm-hmm. then you get allegedly unlimited, but with, really five with gigabytes. a soft cap at five ca- five gigabytes. Yeah, because at which otherwise point... it throttles you to oblivion. Um. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't care about that for most of the time that I've had my phone like, because I've never uh, been throttled because I've never gotten that high. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and and for me being in Morris, uh, I had two G speeds all the time anyway. Right. So yeah, yeah. Um, so Google Fi is different. It, it is very different. You you don't you don't have this uh, throttling issue, right? Right. Well, yeah. So um, yeah. Let's talk about the plan, I guess. Yeah, I think that'd be a good place to start. Yeah. So it's it it is unlimited data, right? Mm-hmm. So, but it and and there's so there's a portion of your bill. That is for the data, and there's a portion that's just for the surface itself. So uh, every single month, you know, you you pay twenty dollars minimum, basically. And that would right? be like for like phone and texting. Yep, you can yep. think of it like that. Um, and then for the the data, you're paying ten dollars per gigabyte that you use, and basically, so and and that so so that's not like you're you're paying, um, you know. Fifty dollars on top of the twenty for um, a five gigabyte limit kind of thing. Uh, it's you choose what what uh, limit you know what what the upper bound of of what you want for that for a month, mm-hmm. and then um, any difference that you get, you get that money back. Credited right? to the next month, right? Yep, it, I believe so. Yeah. Um. So so it's it it is unlimited, and I think. I think you can actually go over what you've set your limit to mm-hmm. be and it'll just bill you a little bit more the next month kind of thing. Right. Um, but I, I'm actually not completely sure about that. Um, and so, so yeah, it's, it's, it's unlimited, but the price scales with how much data you use. So when you sign up, all you need to do is set your data budget. That's, mm-hmm. that's their max thing. Yep. Use less and you get your credits back. Each megabyte of unused data is one cent of credit. Mm-hmm. That's so funny. Uh, need more, and you can keep getting full speed at the same rate, uh, ten dollars per gigabyte. So if you go mm-hmm. over, it's ten dollars per gigabyte. If you don't go over and you use less than you, your allotment, you get credited one cents per megabyte. Yeah. So yeah, I guess no, that makes no sense matter whether you're going above or below, it's still 
ten dollars per gigabyte. Somewhat reasonable. Yeah, I, I mean, like it's not like the price changes no. when you go over. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. So I was actually curious to to go and uh calculate out what my typical monthly usage is um and compare you know the thirty dollars that I'm paying on T-Mobile to how much I would typically be paying on Google Fi. Mm-hmm. Um, unfortunately, I can't do that because I haven't spent any consistent months in the Twin Cities the way that I will be going forward in my life. Right. Um, so how about you, Ryan? Do wh- how, much, how much data do you use in a typical uh, data cycle? I'm going to say between uh, like maybe two gigs and a half. Two gigs and a half? Yeah. Okay. So let's, let's set your, let's set your uh, data plan at three gigabytes just to be safe. And then your actual data usage will be two and a half. Yeah. Um, so you're, yeah, so you would get, so you'd be spending $45 mm-hmm. a month on data. Um, that's going to be significantly more than $30, like, it is. very, very quickly. Now, on the other hand, if I was calling people a lot, it would be nice to be able to just make those unlimited calls and not care. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, yeah, so I'm... Do you okay? I don't call people. You, I mean, yeah, I you do don't call do you that. don't call people. But if you were to do that, you would you would be using your minutes, right? Right. You okay? Because exactly. because when I call people, um, which is actually a bit more often now. Well, more often it's, it's my family calling me. Um, mm-hmm. but uh, so I use a Google Voice number already. Right. Um, and so that goes over my data, mm-hmm. whether I'm on a Wi-Fi hotspot or uh, you know, over mm-hmm. mobile data. Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean. The, the amount of mobile data that that uses up is, is like nothing. Right. It's a pittance, mm-hmm. you know? So it, it's not, it's not going to make a difference in the overall scheme of how much data I'm using. Um, you know, basically it's, it's only Feedly and YouTube that matter. Right. <laughs> lots of, lots of that. Mm-hmm. I use a lot of Reddit these days, but yeah. There you go. Mm-hmm. Uh, wait, is there actually a Reddit app or are you in Chrome? No, no, no. Yeah, I use account? Reddit. Okay. App. Okay. Yeah, client. Yeah. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. So is who who's this for then? If it's not for people who are power users, who's it for? Well, so that's the funny thing. It can't is really be for o- normal people. Only power users are going to be able to take advantage of this because it's only available on one phone, the Nexus Six. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, even if even if it came out that I would be paying less on Google Fi than on T-Mobile, I wouldn't be able to do it because I I don't have mm-hmm. the capability for that. So presumably. This is this Nexus Six lock-in is just uh, kind of like a an interlude to their more prosperous announcement with their next to phone. Mm-hmm. That's the only thing you can assume because otherwise it's a dead end. Like, what are they going to do? Right. Yeah. They. Yeah. They all of the. I would assume that all Nexus phones going forward are going to Be have viable. Ha, yeah. <laughs> viable. Viable. I like it. Um, and I mean. The, I'm hoping that they're going to push whatever standards, uh, go into making this avail, viable, um, yeah. it, you know, onto other, uh, manufacturers' mm-hmm. phones right. that, that run Android. Um, I don't know I, if it's anything special in the hardware. I really doubt that it so is. They, they claim that, like, they have a, the particular radio in the Nexus 6 that that can scan two mobile uh, networks so, at so, the same so time. It, it's, to... it's MIMO, but for a phone. What's MIMO? So it's multiple input-output. Okay. So when you have a, a router, you know, one of those things that give you internet wirelessly. Yep. You know you know about those? Oh, yeah. I've heard of those. Good. I think you might need I... to get a new one. Yeah, I do. So when, when you get one of those, and it, you might see some that have multiple antennas. Mm-hmm. So usually it's, it's it's you know, you either have one antenna or two antennas or three antennas. But these days you can get, you know, devices with pairs of antennas. And okay. So each pair is an input-output pair. So th- those antennas can directionally change uh what its pattern is based on the clients in that direction okay and you can also dedicate those antennas for a client in particular if you want so it's kind of similar to that probably you know you're you're processing multiple streams of connections simultaneously mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah um so that, i mean that's what they claim when, I doubt on, it, on their page everybody buys the radios from the qualcomm and the qualcomm sucks as yep. you know so I'm sure lots of phones have it. Stand by for 20 minutes of Qualcomm rant. Nope. Okay, good. Um, 808 is better. 808? Who's that? Qualcomm. The A10 is worse than the 808. Oh. Isn't that funny? 
Okay, there, and, there, there's your 20 seconds. Gotcha. Okay, we'll, we'll get back to the point here. Very good. Uh huh. Um, what were we talking about? Um, who, what's right, this so, for? Okay, so yeah, who is this for? I mean, um, tons and tons of normal people would see that price scheme and, and be like, that is the best thing ever. I don't know if um, people would say that. If my mom said that, she'd be like, nah, I don't care. So she pays $45 right now and she doesn't care. She gets whatever Virgin Mobile gives her. I don't I don't actually know what I, the plan I mean, is. I think that there's a lot of people in the world who are feeling like the the squeeze of how much money they're they're spending on I their don't know if they actually feel stuff. it. I think they just pay it and don't care. Yeah, well, uh, I think I think that's that happens for a lot of people. There there are a lot of different people out there. Um yeah. I think I, that, have no idea. I think that the thing that um that most like normal people will have to get used to if they switch over to this is the fact that now their phone number is a Google voice number. And what does that mean? Mm, it you depends. Know? Do they care? They, I mean, it, it, when, when you're on this service, obviously it's very possible to just have that phone number and not think of it as a Google voice number and not care about mm-hmm. the fact that you could be receiving calls on your computer or your tablet or whatever. That sounds good. But um, how many people have the infrastructure set up for that? Like how many people have a microphone and a webcam? Well, I, a, a lot of people just have like a laptop as their, Primary as their computer, computer yeah. and that's going to have a microphone built into it. It's going to be awful. Yes, but they're not going to care. Maybe a lot of people. I mean, okay, phones have terrible microphones. Yeah, like, but they're better because they're closer to you. Yeah, like this phone has probably like eight microphones and, in it, and it doesn't and it doesn't pick up the fans from my overheating laptop. <laughs> yeah, that that might have a problem. I, I think that that is a um, a staple of of normal people trademark uh, is that they have one of those fa- large clunky laptops. Yep, made by Toshiba. Oh, right. No doubt. Yes. Um, that you know has lots of cat hair in to- its filter satellite. and uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. and overheats all the time. Yeah. So I think it's a great thing to sell on. I, I don't know if Google's actually doing that. When you look at Round Project Five, you don't see like you're connected on all your devices. Uh, so go to the Experience tab and scroll down to the bottom. After... I see three phones. No, you see a tablet, a phone, and a laptop. Yeah. Okay, that's what I meant. Yeah. They're all phones. Right. Right. I, I yeah okay great that abstract imagery that you have to literally watch that I don't know if that tells people enough. Did you not read the text that's above it as well? Yeah, but it who's it. going to know what that means? Uh, I, well, yeah. If they've never experienced the idea of texting on their computer and actually getting it to somebody else, how would they know? Like people who've used who who have an iPhone and you've used, used iMessage, mm-hmm. they might get it. They might understand the idea of using their computer to iMessage somebody, but. It's not something that people who have never done it before can just immediately grasp, perhaps. Yeah. But, I mean, that, yeah, that image does uh, illustrate it nicely. Is there, like, when you sign up for this, do you get, like, a nice intro video on how to guide you into it? I don't think so. I think that they're relying on their uh, on their moving illustrations to do that kind of thing. Meh. Meh. Hmm. Yeah. Um, so, I mean... So I so what do you think of the overall concept of this of having having a service where you're a client for one company and then you have access to multiple networks? I think it's a great idea. Uh it just needs to either be cheaper or better. Yeah. Cheaper mostly. Yeah. I would I would sign up for this in a heartbeat if it was if like if it was even remotely in this in the area of the $30. <laughs> Like, I'm um, sure Google plan. knows the demographics of people who buy their Nexus devices. Mm-hmm. I'm sure an overwhelming number of people in the U.S. who have bought the Nexus 6 are on that $30 plan. And I have no doubt that Google can't run a survey in four minutes and give me two, <laughs> two, 25 cents of Google rewards credit to find out. I, I feel like they know people don't care about minutes. That they would prefer just a cheaper data plan. Mm-hmm. And almost unlimited at that. Uh, you know, for five gigabytes, what should we get now? I'd have to pay fifty dollars plus twenty, and that's not going to happen. Yeah, actually, I mean, just cutting out that twenty dollar thing mm-hmm. would would make this perfect. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, not perfect because it's still it still isn't a um. I'm paying a certain amount of money for unlimited because I I prefer that because um you know no matter how cheap the per megabyte uh cost is, mm-hmm. I'm still going to be thinking about like. Okay, I'm using my mobile data right now. 
this is going to cost me a little bit more money. So right. I'm, I'm going to actively not kind of it. try to try to avoid like try to seek out the Wi-Fi. hot spots. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What, uh, what a, what a con- contradictory place for Google to be in. Like we want you to use your data to search, but we can't force you to do that because then you're going to have to pay more and we know you don't want to. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But if you, like you say, if they do get rid of that twenty dollars thing, mm-hmm. the the cheapest plan would be ten dollars then, which would be lovely. Oh, so so you would you would just you, pay for data. You would have it. to pay for a gigabyte of data, kind right. of thing. Yeah, and yeah. I could get the grandmother could use that phone. Yeah. Well, not a Nexus Six, but she could use that plan. She doesn't use the phone much, and so she could just text and never call, and that'd be okay. It'd be good for her. Yeah. Um, the U.S. doesn't really have cheap plans like that. You know, when you go to you know, not U.S. You go to the EU somewhere. Uh-huh. You know, you you hear people. Oh yeah, I spent twenty seven euros and I got uh, two weeks of uh, uh, 4G and uh, yeah, it was great. Right. Yep, mm-hmm. that's what I did when I was in Sweden. I just oh, right. I, I yeah, paid yeah. Uh, I paid like thirty two dollars yeah, for ten gigabytes uh, a month and right. didn't have calling or texting at all right. on their on their network. Mm-hmm. But it was fine because I'm I've already yeah converted myself to using data for calling and exactly. texting. And I feel like Google needs to work more towards that to get it to work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But so, like, I love the idea of having these, like, aggregated networks. And I think this is a technology that will be much more important going forward because we're facing a bandwidth crisis here in the U.S. Mm-hmm. Where we have no more, well, we, I think we have more, but we don't have much more bandwidth to allocate to the various carriers. The whole four carriers that B- we by have. By bandwidth, do you mean uh, spectrum? I, yeah, spectrum. Yeah, yes. okay. Yeah. Um, you know... Once we run out of that, then what are they going to do to make better experiences for their the people? I have no idea what 5G will entail, but it's not going to not use Spectrum. It'll Tunnel use qubits. Yes, right. Sure it will. <laughs> no, it won't. I don't remember anything from quantum computing. <laughs> That's okay. You don't need to. <laughs> or maybe you remember and don't remember at the same time. Shut up. Okay. Shut up. <laughs> so that was Google Fly, everybody. <laughs> It's, uh, I mean, it's an intriguing idea. So we'll h- like come back to this, of course, you know, maybe in November when they release their next phone mm-hmm. and they release the next phase of Phi. You, you are really good at coming up with <laughs> Phi related <laughs> phrases right now. <laughs> no, I'm not going to try. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's great. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The future is bright. This has been a. The an episode of the extra dimension. It's not a TED talk, but I'm Ian Buck, and I'm Brian Ramperset. Signing off. Have a good one. <laughs>